Columbus's youth has successfully launched a restoration project for one of the city's most historic landmarks. There's a lot more work being put into it by people in the community definitely makes me excited. And an inside look at how one of Columbus's own was just crowned as a national boxing champion. Haddon has been one of the most skilled young ladies we've had come to our gym and one of the most skilled fighters we've had. All that and more on Torch TV. Have X in preview. Roll it. And take it. Having a voice of students is unique, and in learning the power behind it is special. Onward, forward. Welcome back to Torch TV. I'm your host, Jackson Warren. I'm joined today by Clemens Del Fasse. Clemens, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm all right. You ready for spring break? Yes, I'm so excited. I'm going to Colorado. Woo. Very exciting. All right. But in other news, we have some quick announcements to get into before our first story. Seniors, which you should pay attention to. Jostens will be outside the main offices today during both lunch mods to distribute calves and gowns. Payments can and will be accepted during pickup. Next Wednesday, get a head start on spring break by coasting into the library during advisory to make seashell coasters and sip on, be sip on a beachy beverage. Space is limited to just 30 people, so scan the QR code on the screen to sign up. Now, let's take a look at our top story for today. Ever since its creation in 1889, the Crump Theater has been a Columbus staple. Due to disrepair, it has unfortunately been relegated to just a display on 3rd Street. However, after nearly a decade, it has finally reopened to the public. For over 100 years, the iconic marquee of the Crump has long been a standout feature of Southern Indiana and manages to carve out a distinct identity, even in a city that prides itself on its diverse and groundbreaking architecture. The Cliff Notes version of the history of this building is, it actually turns 135 this year. So it opened as an opera house in 1889 and then went through a reno in 1920 to be just a movie house. And then again in 1941, which is all the Art Deco lobby and like the front of the building that you see now. Due to decades of low maintenance, the theater had to be closed in 2014. However, in the past few years, there has been a massive renovation effort, completely spearheaded by volunteers in the community. I got the keys in October of 2019 as a volunteer, just trying to figure out what the real issues were with the building and could we address them and get this place back on its feet. September of 2020, Shaylee Derringer, her senior project was for here and on a Saturday we had over 100 volunteers show up to help us clean out the building. Um, I really just like started at the very beginning of it. Um, when I was a kid I really wanted to do my senior project with the Crumb. So we had a bunch of volunteers come in and started like tearing out carpet, cleaning out different closets that didn't have anything useful in them. So basically just kind of like the groundwork so that they could get started on everything else. When I started my senior project, we had like six people coming regularly. So the fact that it's grown as much as it has and there's a lot more work being put into it by people in the community definitely makes me excited. The theater finally reopened in late 2023 with larger than life plans to restore the building to its former glory and to live up to the expectations of the people and future of Columbus. So it's really cool to have like the community involvement in Columbus and to be reached out to by people, but people reaching out to guys outside of just the Columbus area to come in and witness the majesty. I'm from the Greenwood area, but I would say it's a pretty rare occurrence for like especially the younger crowd to be involved with things that are happening, like locally. What will it be? It will be a performing arts venue. So you'll see everything from movies, plays, comedians, concerts, you name it. It's a cool legacy to live on, like 
making sure that we're doing the best that we can in the community and as like the younger generation to try to get this place up and running again. I cannot be more excited for it. If the youth is involved then the art of playing live music and being involved within the community starts to go away. I think you should go to the Crump and watch a show whenever you get the chance. Over the past weekend, the Crump held its first play in the venue as a collaboration between itself and the Mill Race Theater Company. It was a roaring success, meaning there's more in stock for the future of the theater. Stay tuned for updates on new events. Now we go to East Media's Rachel Morris with this week's weather forecast. Thanks, Clemens. Today we will have scattered showers with a high near 45 and a low of 41 degrees. Tomorrow we will have a high of 60 and a low around 44. Finally, Saturday will reach a high near 69 with a low of 54. Enjoy the nice weather this weekend. Back to you guys. After the break, we will discuss Hadden Jimenez, a ninth grade boxer who recently made history in Columbus. And we covered the breaking news from Columbus and all around the world. All that and more when we come back. Why is he like by himself? Does he not have like friends or something? Hey, don't say that. That's not nice. Maybe we should invite him to lunch. Yeah, why not? Hey, did you want to come to lunch with me and a couple friends? We'll drive. Me? Yeah, it'll be fun. Okay, yeah, that sounds, that come sounds on. fun. What do you want, peasant? Please, sir, all the people in the village are starving. We all need food, sir. Can you spare a slice of bread for a poor soul like mine? <laughs> Maybe you should have thought of that before you came a peasant. Peasant. Wait one second. Bullying is not king. Throw him in the pit, guard. Wait, no. Please, we can talk about this. Uh, I have money. Come on, we can talk about this. Think, think for a second. Oh, oh here you are, oh, peasant. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Welcome back to Torch TV, everyone. Now let's head straight over to Lauren Degner with our February recap in sports. Thanks guys, February has been a huge month in sports for East. On Tuesday, the Columbus Boys East basketball team had an exciting rematch against our crosstown rival, Columbus North, for our sectional game at East Central High School, earning a decisive victory of 41 to 33, earning them another sectional game against East Central where they will play tonight at 6 p.m. Come out and support our O's. Last Friday, Columbus East Gymnastics competed at the 2024 IHSAA sectional held at Franklin High School. The girls placed 11th with a score of 94.625. Congrats to our Olympians on a fantastic season. Last Saturday was a big day for our H2O Olympians. They sent two relay teams and one diver to the IHSAA state swimming and diving finals in Indianapolis, where the 400 freestyle relay team advanced to the consolation finals, breaking the personal record they set in the sectional finals with a, set, with a time of three minutes and 12.34 seconds. Also, Columbus East diver Gavin Day placed 11th in diving with a score of 422.65. Meanwhile, our band, our Olympian band members competed in state solo and ensemble at North Central High School, where all East students received a gold rating. Congrats to our band members. The Columbus East Show Choirs, Center Stage and Serenade, had their final competition of this season at Franklin Central, bringing an amazing season to a close. 
In wrestling, we had the freshman sophomore state at Southport High School, where many of our wrestlers went on to place. A special congratulations to Lincoln Cooper, who won his weight class going 6-0 on Sunday. Also, sophomore Talon Jessup placed seventh at the state championship. In other news, men's soccer varsity head coach, John Guncher, announced his resignation after 15 years of dedicated service. Finally, Columbus East football has announced that senior Caden Galt will be continuing his academic and athletic career at DePaul University. Good luck to him in the future. That's all we have in eSports, but across town, a North freshman, Hodden Jimenez, has trained for years at the Columbus Police Athletic League gym. Recently, her hard work paid off when she made it to the National Silver Gloves boxing competition in Philadelphia. The Silver Gloves competition for boxing is a nationwide event for the best boxers in the United States. Among those boxers, Columbus's very own Hodden Jimenez, one of the best in her 132 weight class. Hodden made it to the final match. If only you guys knew like the, the punishment she goes through with me and other people to get where she's at is, is amazing. Hadden has been one of the most skilled young ladies we've had come through our gym and one of the most skilled fighters we've had. Hodden won this final match, making her the national champion in the U.S. She was awarded with a belt, a coveted prize for the boxing world. I was actually really happy. I was proud of myself because I proved that hard work does pay off. Hard work beats talent. That's awesome. That's good. I never, never expect one of my kids to be a fighter, so that's a good experience overall, you know. It's just... I was just happy. And she just made history, and it's for the youth, man, so other young kids are looking up to her. Columbus Pal boxing coach Seth Caffey has been at the gym for 24 years. His pride in his boxers take over his everyday life, supporting them even when he cannot make it to the competitions. I didn't get to go. And honestly, it's my first national tournament I've missed since I've been coaching, uh, since COVID. And it broke my heart that I couldn't go, but I was very happy because we have a very, very good coaching team. And we have a very, very good family family atmosphere in, in, in here. I, I FaceTimed her after, after the tournament, and I was crying. I cried on FaceTime with her. So uh, I was very, very proud. Columbus has a strong boxing community, and Hodden is the fourth boxer from Columbus to be crowned a national champion. If you're interested in learning how to box, visit the Columbus Police Athletic League gym on South Mapleton Street to learn more. Jackson and Clements, back to you guys. Thanks, Lauren. Every year, students in FFA are welcome to bring their tractors to school, inviting a crowd of students and teachers who enjoy watching and having fun. This tradition has been a part of FFA for decades and has been gaining more traction ever since. Students who bring their tractors to celebrate National Future Farmers of America Week are escorted to school by police car. Some of these future farmers like to prepare their tractors to look shiny and spectacular on the day. Besides being fun and interesting, Tractor Day can also bring acknowledgement to people who are not yet in FFA or interested in agriculture. Now, let's head over to Cam McClellan with more news. Thanks, Jackson. In breaking news, just this Wednesday, Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell announced he will be stepping down from the position in November. The 82-year-old senator has served as a party leader for the past three years and is the capstone to his near four-decade-long stay in the Senate from when he assumed office in 1985. This decision also comes after multiple publicized incidents where McConnell froze up and became unresponsive during official statements, leading many to question his mental stability and qualification to stay in office. McConnell states he plans to continue to serve the rest of his term, ending in 2027, but has made no public statement if he plans to run for re-election. Recently, former U.S. President Donald Trump was fined $354 million after it was ruled he lied about his wealth in a civil trial. Additionally, Trump has been banned from doing business in the state of New York for three years. This verdict comes in the midst of Trump's race for the Republican nomination. Trump has stated his four criminal cases have made him more popular with voters, and so far, he has won every single Republican primary in dominant fashion. And in world news, Alexei Navalny was recently found dead in a Russian prison. Navalny, who had been a stern critic of Russian President Vladimir Putin, was first in prison in 2021 on a three and a half year sentence, but later had it extended by nine and 19 years respectively. Prison officials have stated that he simply collapsed after taking a walk. Despite this, allies of Navalny have stated that he was assassinated by Vladimir Putin after they secured a deal to swap from Navalny with another inmate from Germany. His burial is set to take place today in Moscow. 
And finally, in local news, after years of delays, the 150-year-old Bartholomew County Courthouse will finally be getting an update. County officials signed a $3.3 million deal to allow this renovation to begin on Wednesday. The contract is with Dunlap & Company. The project is set to be fully completed before May of 2025. County commissioners have granted Dunlap permission to proceed, meaning construction will likely be starting very soon. That's all for news. Now back to you guys. That's all we have for today. For myself, Clements, Cameron, Rachel, Lauren, and the rest of the Torch TV crew, thanks for watching. Remember to take care of yourself, others, and the place. And as always, try to be the best part of someone's day.